is that uh, we're running a bit over time, so I'll try to whisk through this as quickly as possible. Um, just a quick introduction to who I am. Uh, for those that don't know me, my name's Matt Linegar. I'm the te Temple Director at Timber First. Um, I'm a leading solid timber engineer in the UK. I've been working with CLT now for just over seven years. I've uh, been responsible and, and involved with the delivery of over 60 CLT buildings, not only in the UK, but more recently at a global level. Um, one of the landmark projects that you've heard mentioned a few times today, the Stat House at Murray Grove, was a key point in certainly my career, um, and I think CLT's career moving forward in the UK. Um, and I'm really passionate about um, designing the solid timber and really trying to develop its application um, for sustainable use, not just within the UK, but at a global level. And really, my story really began right back as, as a graduate when I started working for ARA, um, at the Research and Development Department in ARA. Um, and I was sitting next to a couple of guys, a guy called Peter Ross, another guy called Andrew Lawrence, who were timber engineers, and, a bit, and Peter, Peter Ross, a very famous timber engineer. Um, and that's really where the seed was planted for me for timber. And then through my um, career, I then worked for a company called Technica, Consulting Structure Engineers, where we provided a lot of um, designs for KLH UK. And really, that's where it really started getting me going as far as timber. And my good friend and colleague, Carmine Spice, describes that as the timber disease. I'm not quite sure disease is the right word for it, it's a bit negative, but it kind of doesn't describe it. As you really start getting into timber um, and to cross laminate, uh, cross laminate timber in particular, you really start to, to get um, taken up on it. It becomes very difficult to then really see any other solution in a building when you're sitting with a design team at the early stage and you just you see these big bits of CLT flashing at you. This is the only solution. So I decided to embrace CLT a little bit more and work directly then um, for a leading UK design supply and install company, KLH UK, which fostered my career a little bit more um, and gave me much deeper insight in terms of how CLT is manufactured and how it's delivered. But always thirsty for more and then throwing more fuel on the fire for my timber desire, I wanted to then look at a lot deeper into timber um, and how to apply it, particularly with products like cross laminated timber. Um, and that's really what started timber first. So what I'm going to talk to you about today is, is you know, I haven't got long to tell you about it, so I've tried to, to keep it very short, but to try and um, not necessarily teach you something new, but maybe just to try and get your brains thinking as designers um, that CLT is a product, it's not a huge monolithic piece of timber that rolls out of a factory you can carve your building into. So we must remember that sustainability and sustainability in design is not simply about specifying timber. Um, really to be a sustainable building, we have to think about um, the appropriate use of materials. I think Gavin from Ramble talked about this earlier. Simply throwing timber at the solution doesn't make it sustainable. And, and admittedly, that's how the market developed a lot in the UK in the early stages, was pushing as much CLT into the design as possible. And that's what was required at the time. And now I think we're moving into a new generation of these hybrid structures, um, focusing um, predominantly on timber. So as a designer, we really need to have a very good and clear understanding of the products and the materials that we are working with. And I think I just want you to hold that thought in your mind as I flick through the, the future slides. I'm sure most of you in this room know the journey already, but for those that don't, and just to keep, keep reinforcing the point, the kind of journey of how the CLT arrives to your site. It's a tree, it's felled, it's sawn into a board, and then every board that enters that CLT factory goes into a panel that will arrive for your project on site. So there's not a big warehouse of timber panels sat there waiting for you to go. So when you're in the design phase of your project, that individual board that's left the sawmill is already destined um, for waiting for your, for your panel. How does the CLT get here? So we've heard it's all manufactured, uh, predominantly in Europe at the moment. It has to get here. So how is it going to get here? It's going to get here in a truck. It sounds pretty obvious, but it's worth, um, worth thinking about this. Actually, if Peter Wilson gets his own way soon, the trucks won't be coming from Calais, they'll be coming from Scotland. Um, but that's what the future has to us. So what does that mean in terms of us as designers trying to design a CLT building? Well, it starts to put some restrictions um, into the panel sizes that we, start, that we can start with. So the jigsaw pieces, they're already limited by the fact they have to be transported. So I think at a very, very basic level as a designer, you know you're going to be limited in terms of width, in terms of length, and in terms of height of a panel. This is just, I think throughout this presentation, don't think anything that I'm saying here, don't take it as prescriptive, it's really just a set of guidelines, and not strict rules, but this is to start getting to think about that it's a panelised product, and certainly 
what Jonas was saying at DRM, I think that they, they very really get that as a, as a design concept. They're starting with its parts, the design is building. So we've already introduced this sort of um, restriction in terms of panel size, in terms of our uh, panel for CLT through the transport. Um, and that really, at the heart of it, is how all the CLT manufacturers have set up their production plants, about how they transport the material from their manufacturing facility to a site. Um, so very typically, there are three sort of sizes of panels that are produced by most of the CLT manufacturers. All of them will vary slightly in dimension, but typically 2.4 metres, 2.7 metres and 3 metres. And just looking back to that slide, you can see what that means. So if you're dealing with 2.4 metre wide panels, they fit in the, track, in the back of a truck flat-wise, a smaller truck. Their four elements can be lifted out and placed into position. Um, all elements that might be a bit taller, three metres, go to the mega trailer. They can be lifted out vertically and placed vertically. But what does that then mean in terms of your bespoke panel? Because what's not happening is we're getting big blanks like this arriving to site and then cutting them. They're actually going to be cut at the factory using a CNC process. It's very accurate. So this very typically what you might, might see in terms of your bespoke panel on site. And what I'm trying to, trying to highlight here in the orange is this concept of, of wastage that we need to think about as designers as well. If we only ever think about the green outline at the bottom, then we're never really truly designing an efficient um, building from CLT. We need to start to think about the bits that are left over and what happens to those bits that are left over. It's all very good for the CLT manufacturers because they can make biomass pellets and it's a very good industry, I'm sure. But what does that mean for you as a designer and the clients that are paying for this building? So we can start to think about these modular elements these, uh, that are being manufactured. And if we really want to be really efficient, then we can start to set our buildings out, the grid of our building out, based on these standard modular dimensions. As I said, don't think that this is the only thing you can do with CLT. Um, we just seen with the Tower of Love, you can do some quite extreme things with CLT, but just to start reinforcing the idea that we should at least have some consideration that these are a panelised element, there's other panels that are going to form your construction. So let's start thinking about what that means in terms of the grid layout of your building. Bringing back in this concept of wastage, we then need to start to have an understanding of what the details of CLT are. How do you design it? How do you connect it together? Um, so again, thinking of that modulisation, if we have our 2.4 metre panels, we stack them all together, we're able to start the grid, and we've got to connect them together. How are they connected together? So very typically, a half lap is formed in a panel, and the panels are screwed together. Now, just to give you some examples here of how, perhaps not understanding how the detail might work, or over-engineering the detail, can start to have an effect on this thing called wastage, which is really the heart of what I'm trying to talk to you about today. So a typical half lap would normally be around 50 millimetres. So that'd be about two and a half percent wastage. But if we over-engineer it a bit, if we go to 90, we're getting on to four percent wastage. I've seen some designers, other designers that have come up with 150 gram half laps. We're still talking six percent wastage. We're starting to introduce within that panel element. Thinking about walls, I said these panels come in standard sizes. If we're setting out our floor to ceiling height, if we set it out at 2.8 meters, what does that mean? That means so we're cutting off 200 mil of a mother panel. That's wastage. It's going somewhere. You're paying for the whole panel. Then start to look at how you might create openings in these structures. The easiest way is just to cut a door opening in the structure. You can see in the middle um, wall there. That's very commonly done with CLT. But actually, if you start thinking about not cutting it out, but then cutting pieces from the mother panel, you can really start to reduce wastage. So with a whole cut out, it could be around 8%. If we actually start to use pieces to form that wall, we can be down below 5%. And that's what was shown in, in Gavin's slide earlier at, 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 from Randolph, which showed on the City Academy project. It was that advanced thinking about how can we use the elements more efficiently, reduce wastage. Hang on myself in my um, But we also need to still think about it. There's no point doing that previous example I just showed you on the right-hand side there, <coughs> forming the wall from three pieces don't think about how we're doing it. This is quite an extreme example of trying to get the point across. If for that lintel over the doorway, you specified a different panel size, but nowhere else on that project were you using that panel size, you're actually introducing a significant amount of wastage in terms of that single panel. So we need to not only really think intelligently how we form the buildings from the elements, we need to think about the variety of panels that we might be introducing. 
This is another extreme example, um, not particularly well drawn, I apologise for that one, I'm not good at curves. Um, but if we're, we're introducing curved structures, um, again we saw that in the city and the Open Academy, curved structures, um, there are good ways of doing it in CLT and there are bad ways of doing it in CLT. And that can have a significant influence on the amount of wastage that we generate through our design. So all the time you know, we need to be thinking about this, this element of wastage if we want to be good, sustainable designers. So what does that really, really mean? Well, if you, if you consider the base elements that you're dealing with, the mother panels that you're dealing with in the design, we can really get wastage on CLT structures at a very low level, maybe 5%, maybe lower if we're very efficient. But very poor designs can be, conversely, in the opposite direction, we can be as high as 20%. So what does that mean? Well, what that means is 500 euros a meter cube, maybe average, for CLT. Not, not um, design supply and install, but um, material price only. Start applying that rate to a building that maybe has two and a half, three thousand cubic meters of timber. You can start to see why CLT building might be more expensive than traditional construction. But if we employ those sort of basic thoughts and principles about reducing wastage and intelligent using panels, we might be more expensive than traditional construction. It can be competitive, or possibly even cheaper. So, so a very brief presentation. I just wanted to try and install some thought processes behind it, not to be a restrictive um, process to the design. But I think if we can understand that we're dealing with a product, then I think we can deliver more successful, more sustainable designs in CLT, and we will see more um, structures competing directly um, with traditional construction. So. That, I hope, is the first in a series of seminars I would like to give about sort of design tips around CLT. Um, if you'd like any further information about that or any other things um, on how to reduce wastage in, in CLT structures or think more intelligent about CLT.